Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Tuesday the 5th of July and I do hope this finds you well. Thank you for, for joining me. Um, it's lovely that you're here with me. As always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We'll use one of the day's Bible readings and a reflection on the reading. On a Tuesday, the theme for prayer is incarnation. And so we pray. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, yet born of the Virgin Mary. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Holy God, Holy and Mighty One, Holy and Strong One, abide in us. Holy God, Holy and Incarnate One, Holy and Indwelling One, abide in us. Holy God, Holy and Life-Giving One, Holy and Guiding One, abide in us. And the psalm today is Psalm 121, My help comes from the Lord. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth for evermore. My help comes from the Lord. And we continue reading from the book of Judges and we've reached Judges chapter 9. Abimelech, son of Jerubbaal, went to his mother's brothers in Shechem and said to them and to his, all his mother's clan, Ask all the citizens of Shechem, which is better for you, to have all seventy of Jerubbaal's sons rule over you, or just one man? Remember, I am your flesh and blood. When the brothers repeated all this to the citizens of Shechem, they were inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is related to us. They gave him seventy shekels of silver from the temple of Baal Berith, and Abimelech used it to hire reckless scoundrels who became his followers. He went to his father's home in Ophrah and on one stone murdered his seventy brothers, the, the sons of Jerubal. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubal, escaped by hiding. Then all the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo gathered beside the great tree at the pillar in Shechem to crown Abimelech king. When Jotham was told about this, he climbed up onto the top of Mount Gerizim and shouted to them, Listen to me, citizens of Shechem, so that God may listen to you. One day the trees went out to anoint a king for themselves. They said to the olive tree, Be our king. But the olive tree answered, Should I give up my oil, by which both gods and humans are honoured, to hold sway over the trees? Next the tree said to the fig tree, Come and be our king. But the fig tree replied, should I give up my fruit, so good and sweet, to hold sway over the trees? Then the trees said to the vine, Come and be our king. But the vine answered, Should I give up my wine, which cheers both gods and humans, to hold sway over the trees? Finally, all the trees said to the thornbush, Come and be our king. The thornbush said to the trees, If you really want to anoint me king over you, come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, then let fire come out of the thornbush and consume the cedars of Lebanon. Have you acted honourably and in good faith by making Abimelech king? Have you been fair to Jerubal and his family? Have you treated him as he deserves? Remember that my father fought for you and risked his life to rescue you from the hand of Midian. But today you have revolted against my father's family. You have murdered his seventy sons on a single stone and have made Abimelech, the son of his female slave, king over the citizens of Shechem, because he is related to you. So have you acted honourably and in good faith towards Jerubal and his family today? If you have, may Abimelech be your joy, and may you be his too. But if you have not, let fire come out from Abimelech and consume you, the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo, and let fire come out from you, the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo, and consume Abimelech. Then Jotham fled, escaping to Beer, and he lived there because he was afraid of his brother Abimelech. So there you go, another account in the saga of the judges. Let me read a reflection written by Catherine Williams. Gideon's extravagant lifestyle and lack of integrity have far-reaching consequences. 
Abimelech, Gideon's son by his slave girl, wheedles, begs and slaughters his way to the throne. Only one of Gideon's seventy sons, Jotham, survives, and he speaks out against Abimelech through the parable of the trees. The olive, fig and vine refuse the call to leadership, not wishing to lay down their current life-giving production. Space is thereby created for the more pervasive and thornier bramble to accept the crown. Whether the bramble will be a place of refuge or destruction hangs in the balance. A call to leadership by God and others can be challenging and demanding, often not sought and sometimes unwanted, especially if one is already happily engaged in valuable and generative work for the kingdom. But some are called to lay down one form of work in order to lead and have oversight, enabling others to grow and flourish. As we see from the parable, refusing to accept leadership may result in a risky or precarious appointment, which could lead to fiery damage for all, leader and led alike. We are reminded that the flourishing of evil only requires good people to do nothing. In Jesus, we have a model of leadership shaped by self-emptying, humility, appropriate strength and sacrificial love for others, underpinned by a deep, trusting and passionate relationship with God. Let's pray for leaders who engender and encourage these qualities. It's a really helpful reflection, isn't it? And a really challenging one for any of us who are in any form of leadership. And so we turn to prayer and we begin with the collect for this week. God, our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen that the coming of Christ may disperse all darkness, that the birth of Christ may hallow all life, that the love of Christ may be in every heart, Lord, have mercy, that the peace of Christ may fill the world, that the descent of Christ may uplift all peoples, that the humility of Christ may teach us gentleness, Christ, have mercy, that the presence of Christ may be within us, that the power of Christ may be upon us, that the spirit of Christ may fill us, Lord, have mercy. And we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, born into a human family, may we know you in our homes. Bless our families and friends, our neighbours and all your people. Grant that we may rejoice that you were made flesh and dwell among us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Father who has shown his love for us, be with us. The Son who's come to be among us, be with us. The Spirit who fills the whole world, be with us. The Holy Three be within and without us now and evermore. Amen. So thank you for joining me for prayer today. Uh, I hope you have a lovely day. And if you're able to, please do join us again tomorrow. Until then, take care and God bless. Bye for now.